Welcome to another episode of Murder the Internet with John and Rich Kayanka, and I'm really happy to say, oh my god, this is it. This is the day. This is the day. Our 500 500 episode. Oh my god! Congratulations. to you, the listener, <laughs> yeah, thank you for listening for 500 episodes. Five, well, 499. This is the 500. Do you assume people listen to this whole thing? They turn it on, they go to sleep after minute three. Yeah, that's how it works. Right. That's this is the intent of the podcast. So does that quit. still count as? Actually, somebody told me this week that they listen to the podcast uh, every night before they go to bed. Really? And I went and and then you fall asleep listening to it. And they're like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, also, mm-hmm. I cut myself to let the ants out. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I do. But then I just wrap foil around the cut, mm-hmm. keeps them right in. Alex keeps Jones. Right in the skin, keeps me energized. Yeah, you yeah. got to take your supplements. Um, which supplement do I need to take? Ooh, you need vitamin aluminum. Pretty sure that's Is one. Is that vitamin A? A-L-U... It's vitamin uh, aluminum. Aluminum. Yes. Yeah. yes aluminium. The British call it aluminium. So if yeah. you go into a British drugstore and which you I want often do. some vitamin aluminum, you have to say, I want vitamin aluminium, mate. and then they will give it to you. Mate. Uh, and if you want pot, you ask for mate. go- mates. Well, you have, no, 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 you don't mate ask sticks. for mates. Mates are like joints, too. Never yeah, mind. Those are, yeah, Governor Six are joints. Speaking of joints, I broke a lot of my joints. Yeah, what the hell happened? We did record last week because <laughs> this is literally the text <sighs> I got from Rich. Uh, I fell down and broke my ass. Probably can't talk. No, my ass bone. Mm-hmm. You said ass. Ass bone. Whichever. It was my ass bone. I you know remember. what your ass bone is called? I sent it. I was on a lot of painkillers, but I remember what it was. Yeah, it's, it's called my ass bone. It's called your coccyx, uh, which is so hot. You son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. On our 500th episode, you have to call me that. Start with the dirty This dog. friendship is over. Like, look, I'm not calling you that. I'm calling your ass bone that. Yeah. Well, yeah. okay. More mm-hmm. power to it then. Yeah. So this is what I did. I went up to get my one and a half year old daughter as she woke up from, you know, her nap time. That's what kids do. They sleep and then they wake up unless if your parent wrong and smother them to death, which I saw in many Lifetime Network movies starring Judith Light. What if I put a python in? Because I have a one year old. What if the python is your baby? What? It, no. Well, the baby. Your eventually... wife gave birth to a snake. Um, literally. That would have been made the birth a lot easier, I guess. Because oh, yeah. right, the snake would have just right out. I've seen a lot of Japanese cartoons. Uh-huh. Lots of snakes and vaginas. What is the sound of a snake coming out of a vagina? What does that uh, sound like? If no one's there to hear it? Yeah. It makes a sound. If a snake comes out of a woman's vagina in the woods and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound? Can we backtrack on this because this is genuinely making me sick? Okay. I mean, a snake going into a woman's vagina, hot. Why would it do that? Coming out. Ugh. Why would it go in? What is there? Well, how did it get in there in the first place? It didn't. It's on. You just said it's going in. Okay. So anyway, your baby is a snake. No, my baby is human. Right. I'm sorry. I forgot where we we're going. You brought up the snake. Okay. Part. But I put a, a. I was talking about I Judith put a White. python in with my baby to smother the baby, uh-huh. and they just became the best of friends. And now the pillow. baby is training the python to come after me. See, you know, your problem is you make everything needlessly. Com- you make everything. <laughs> I'm editing this out. <laughs> no, do not edit that. I'm that editing this out. So I don't look like... complicated. Just because I the can't... The irony that you're criticizing me for something you can't even pronounce correctly is great. There's something I could pronounce. Fuck you. Mm. So anyways, I was uh, I was picking up my daughter. Yeah. And uh, you know how most people walk downstairs? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I fell down them. Which is a quicker way of getting from point Much A to faster. point B. While you're holding your baby? Yes. Oh, Jesus. And so, uh, fortunately, I just fell on my ass bone, as referenced earlier, right, and right. I just slid down every single stair now and you hit my head on the wall. Your baby's name, just for clarification, is not ass bone. No. So when you say Slum. you fell on your ass bone... I No, I actually held the baby as an item that I wanted to protect. Oh, good for you. And so she was okay. Me, my ass bone, I mean, I'd show you my ass right now. Mm-hmm. But you can't see the black and blue because it's healed. I'm going to hold it up to the microphone and people can use their imaginations. Yeah, yeah okay, hold on. Yeah, I'm okay, gonna... there we go. All right. There he goes. Pulling down his pants. Y'all see that? Yep. That is sexy. Yeah. Um, it looks a lot better. See, and look, it, it moves when I do this. Uh, That's pretty cool. Oh, it's... Hold on. Take your pants. You, you can keep them off. I mean... It's hot in here. I might think about that. Yeah. I like thinking about not wearing pants. So you fell down the stairs holding your baby. Yeah. And uh, you held the baby aloft. How did you hold the baby so that it close to my chest? It was a natural instinct. I don't like to say I'm a hero, but I was very heroic in that moment. Yeah, yeah. And so I clutched. Did you fall? I clutched my newborn, my precious tot, Mm -hmm. to my chest as I fell and absorbed the blunt 
brunt of the pain. So you were literally like a human shield for your baby. Exactly. Look at you. I'm also the human Shoot. fall because I was the one who caused myself right, to fall. Right, but you know, at least if you cause a problem, you also protect other people from being hurt by Exactly, that's what I do. clumsiness. Like when I start fires, I kind of shout to everybody in the apartment, hey y'all, you're gonna burn down, you might wanna leave. Yeah. I don't shout very loud. No, you kind of whisper it. Yeah, and I kind of have my, my, my hands over my mouth. I go, hello, you, you're gonna burn to death. And then when the police come and the firemen come, I just say, <laughs> I tried to warn them. I get off scot-free. Was it the, the stairs to the basement or was it the stairs upstairs? It was upstairs. Oh, the upstairs, upstairs. Because yeah. the stairs to the basement, you have that baby gate that I've tripped over many times. Yes, you have. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's been comical every moment. I know. I almost think you just put it there so that my dumb ass would trip over it. It's like the Ottoman from Dick Van Dyke. Every <laughs> single time you come over, you just plummet. <laughs> and then Maury Amsterdam yeah. and Rosemary. <laughs> was her name just Rosemary? I don't remember. Good for her. Like That's back in the day, name. not taking a surname yeah. so that people didn't know whether she was married or not. She Rose- was the Madonna of the 60s. Rosemary was a good name for the time. Yep. Yeah. A little spice humor for you. <laughs> I don't- because time is a spice. It's- I'm sweating a lot. You are, sweat- <laughs> you are really sweating a lot. No, I, I actually do sweat a lot, but yeah. I've been drinking a lot of water today. Uh, so. Good for you. Mm, good not for you. really. I mean, I, I don't sweat like because I don't drink pig. water. What do you drink? Uh, soda and salt. You do you usually come over with uh, soda and or salt. And and you have yeah, neither. big glass of soda, big glass of salt. Mm-hmm. And I pour a little bit of each into each. And, yeah, it's you know, like uh, Coke and rum. Yeah. Soda my, and salt. My doctor told me to stop doing it. Who's your doctor? Uh, uh, doctor Who? Doctor Who. Oh, I love Doctor Who. Uh, oh, I'm so glad. Uh, then he got Dr. into Who. the retardus and uh, that is the elevator left. that yep. he goes in. The right. great glass elevator of Doctor Who. <laughs> there, you know, there's a, an I American show. Every like America, uh, every British hit show, every show that's been a hit in in British, uh, mm-hmm. eventually has an American counterpart. Really, there should be an American counterpart to Doctor Who. Like by this point. Gobots to the Transformers. Right, exactly. Or you know, The Office to. Okay, what's the something dumb and boring and cheap that people would just jizz their pants over and make tons of fan fiction then? Uh, Doctor Who. Yeah, there we yep, go. There okay, go. so the American equivalent of Doctor Who is Doctor Who. Be Doctor Howdy. <laughs> Doctor What's Up. <laughs> Doctor Sup. <laughs> Doctor Sup, Dr. fam. Sup. Uh, yeah, he, he gets... So is this like a UPN kind of thing for the for the urban <laughs> kids or what? <laughs> Doctor Sup. Yeah, that's it's exactly what it is. It's Doctor Sup. Who, uh-huh. uh, he's got a magical phone booth. That he what? okay okay wait, okay no 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 no, no no let's go back let's go back when was the last fucking time you saw a phone booth I know that's what's magical about it is it that still it exists, exists? It that's, still so exists. it doesn't have powers and people are just like look at that phone booth <laughs> he it, makes calls at the expense of like how much your phone calls collect cost calls nowadays? they're all collect calls <laughs> and it's will you accept a collect call from Doctor Sub <laughs> no no <laughs> every that. episode yeah it's him trying to call people on their dime <laughs> <laughs> nobody picking up from Doctor Sub. <laughs> That's his catchphrase. <laughs> then he hangs up the phone, shrugs his shoulders, titles. That's uh-huh. it. That's every it's a, episode. So it's Doctor like Sub. a like a micro episode, like a microbosobe. Yes. Microbosobe. Yes. yes. That's I, what I call I, him. Doctor Sup prescribed me microbosobes, <laughs> ten millimeters of it, to use the uh, British measurement system <sighs> as I sweat in my eye. Yeah, I don't know enough about Doctor Who to keep this. I going, know a lot though. about Doctor okay, Who. Okay, well, let's go, keep going then. Okay. All right. Uh, Doctor Who premiered in 1728. 1728. The, in Britishania, as the you said. The third television show in Britain. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the first one was uh, White Guys Talking. Okay. So the second one, uh, then Doctor Who, and then... The fourth one was... Fourth more, through 48. Uh, the fourth one was Where My Knickers At. Oh, right. yeah, when they get in the lift. Yeah. And, and like, a, a, a Chav Nick Mobile mm-hmm. as they were on their way to the pensioners. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so Doctor Who... Um, the original Doctor Who number one uh, was, of course, Tom Baker, the one that everybody knows and loves because mm. he was doughy. Um, he had a great sense of humor. Like, he would fall and say, whoops, holy shit. That was his catchphrase. <laughs> like, he, he would just slip and fall and say, whoops, whoops holy, holy shit. Holy shit. He said it like 48 times an yeah. episode. But nobody could say it like him. That yeah, was a yeah, thing. Because he anybody that- could say a catchphrase. Like, everybody back in the 90s was like, swing. You know, but Ugh. nobody could really nail that, like Mike Myers and Dana Carvey. Yeah, Tom Baker is the original Mike Myers and Dana Carvey. That's true, combined. Yeah, it's the British version. 
of Mike Myers. Of Mike if you Myers. take Mike Myers, this is uh, not to go into mathematics again, but if you take uh, Mike Myers plus Dana Carvey, you equals uh, British over uh, uh, Tom Baker. Wow. It's true. Wow. Look it up in your math book. So Tom Baker. No, do it right now. Look it up uh, in your fucking uh, math book. Math book open. You're looking at your hand. Uh. <laughs> Same thing. I don't know why I'm using my hand as a Yeah, the microphone well, doesn't look, pick up. Look, the here's the thing. Um, See, when I was doing the pants thing, at least I was making the ruffling, but yeah. when you're just holding your hand, the mic... <sighs> here's me opening a book. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, here, I'll, I'll get... Here's me turning the pages. <laughs> I'll go to one of those sites where you don't have to give credit to the people who made the sound effects and just insert book flip dot mp3. Actually, my hand is my math book because it's what I count on. Yes, hand is nature's math book. I can always count on my hand too. Mm, unlike gross. my wife. That's gross. what I'm going for. No. Is the masturbation. Yeah, I, yeah I get it. I get it. I don't know if you do. Dr. Shop thinks you're disgusting, hysterical. asshole. Anyway, so uh, Thomas Baker, the first Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Yep. Who's also the second. See, because the thing about Doctor Who is um, he's an alien. From a different time. How is it? Wait, wait, hold on. Different hold planet. On, so he's an alien. Yeah. Who just happens to, to be, be from a different time. Uh huh. Who looks like a very British man. He's called the Time Lord. Okay, so that what me- time is he from? Uh, all time. Like 130? All time. Oh, all time. Anytime. Okay. Well, for example, wait, he said he's from another look. time. If he's from all time, would he also shush, be from this shush, time? Shush. Okay. We'll do a little exercise here, okay? All right. Name a time. Like a year or? Just name a time. Okay. Anytime. Uh, the, the the dinosaurs. Time. Okay. Uh, also, hour and minute, please. Dinosaurs and uh, the time. 7.30 p.m. on a Thursday. He was there. He was there. He's from wow. There. Mm-hmm. Wow. Because the time lords can travel anywhere. Mm-hmm. Beginning of time, end of time. They don't really like going to the end of time because then they die. Yeah. So they try to avoid that, like maybe 10 seconds before the end of time. So they, they, they like the adventurous ones, they go up to like the edge of the end of time, look over, like maybe hang off the edge of time by their mm-hmm. fingertips, take some selfies, and then they crawl back up and go, huh, just a joke, everybody. Well, no, because they're also from the future and the past. So they wow. don't have cameras at the same time that they do. Yeah. So when they take the selfie with a thing that doesn't or does exist, then they can or cannot see it in the past. And that pretty much summarizes that's Doctor it. Who. So that's Doctor Who. So mm-hmm. every everybody in Doctor Tom Who. Tom Baker. Is Tom uh, Baker. Yeah. He plays every role. Yeah, but here's the thing. Yeah. Uh, when they wanted to get rid of Tom Baker, he... he well, the first thing he did is slip and say his favorite catchphrase, which I already forgot. Oh, shit, shit my ass or I something. I shit in my ass. Yeah. I, I, I shit in my own ass. <laughs> I, I model my life after Tom Baker, as you can tell. I tried saying that when I fell down the stairs, but all the blood was literally gone from my head and I threw up. So it was kind of muffled by vomit. I was like, no, oh, no. no. <laughs> What, what are we going to have t-shirts based on the amazing catchphrases on the show? Like, oh, no. I can make them on Amazon, but they just won't approve them. <laughs> oh, no. I can't say it. Oh, no. I shit in my ass. Tom Baker. Oh, no. I shit in my ass. What is that going to be a catchphrase? Oh, no. I shit in my own ass. Um, Quote, line, Tom Baker. The, the moment the internet ruins it. <laughs> We need to keep this a virgin phrase. Uh, Nobody else, please quote us by saying Tom Baker. (laughs) Oops, I shit shit my my own ass. ass. (laughs) So the Time Lards. Time Lards. Uh, They travel via the TARDIS, which is the phone booth. Yep. uh, Which people originally used to call the police when they got their knickers knacked. Knickers knacked. In in British Topia. Which was the crossover that they did with the show Where My Knickers At. Yeah, Where My Knickers At. Yeah, Knickers. Knickers. Yeah, you could say Knickers. You can, but it's not politically Unless correct. you're British. If you're British, you can say knickers, knickers, whatever. But you can say a bunch of things that don't really American, make sense. It's an American, we have to say where my knickers at. So mm-hmm. anyway. Uh, is th- at. Is at. Is at. Sorry, with a Z. Mm-hmm. So that was the crossover episode where Doctor Who found the knickers mm-hmm. that were and, missing in the TARDIS. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. But he has, uh, there's like a vil- an evil race of these uh, robots that are essentially uh, some sort of fire hydrant with like little pokey things. Uh-huh. And they come after him and they say like, we're going to fuck you up, Doc, and wow. here we come, Doc, and no right on red, and Britishtopia, Doc, and stuff like that. Uh-huh. And he has uh, he has a secret weapon, though, and it's the uh, it's the amazing screwdriver. You know, if he really actually wanted to fight against robots, he should have named himself the Paradox. Whoa! Because you know, he's a Doc, but that's yeah. what kills robots, is if you give him a Paradox, their brains melt. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. 
I, okay, give the computer right now. We're using a computer to record this. Give okay. it a paradox, and we'll um, see if it's brain melts. Uh, the, I'm my own grandfather, computer. Yeah, it's still working. That's weird. Well, maybe it's like it's, your little theory. Oh, maybe because it's true. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so yeah, he uses his, his amazing screwdriver, which can do all sorts of things. Like, okay, say you lock yourself out of your house. Okay. Okay. What do you do? Uh, call my wife. Uh, you don't have your phone. Yell as hard as I can. There's a lot of uh, in the general like lava direction of my approaching wife. you. Okay. Rapidly, very uh, fast. I would uh, make a boat. Out of uh, what? Out of you don't have the time. You have parts. mere seconds. You have mere seconds. I would climb on top of my car. Do you drive your car to your doorstep? Yeah. You do? Well, it's like the driveway's right there. That's like some Flintstones-esque shit there. Well, I'm just saying like my patio or whatever is like right outside of the doorstep is right there. And then my car is maybe three feet away. So you I don't have that j- time. Let's just cut to the chase. You're screwed. Okay. But now Dr. Whom, that's the correct that's way. That's the correct one. Yes. It, it drives me crazy when people call him Dr. Who. He's got the amazing screwdriver. Mm-hmm. And what it is, is it, it looks like a screwdriver, but it's not quite. Just a basic screwdriver. Now, when you're friend. talking about screwdriver, you're talking about the tool, or are you talking about the drink that my dad used to drink a lot? I, I'm talking about the tool. Okay. Okay. Uh, so he points it at the door lock. Uh huh. He pushes some sort of button, and uh-huh. it goes. Uh-huh. And then the door uh-huh. opens, and he gets inside. Bam! Uh-huh. No more lava. No more. He did it. The lava's gone. Another thing, like say, so uh, screwdrivers get rid of lava. They help you <clears throat> escape from lava. So all those people at Pompeii. Yeah. If All they, they needed was a screwdriver. Amazing screwdriver. Amazing screwdrivers. By George pending, Foreman. No G. No. Right. Uh, then they could have escaped Pompeii. They were dumb. They were That was the stupid. problem. Because, you know, you, yeah. s- you live under a volcano, first of all, <laughs> dumb. Yeah. Then well, the volcano begins rumbling, and you're still there, and you're like, oh, maybe it'll settle down. Dumb. When you see them, they're all, they all do look very dumb. Yeah. Like, they're all like, eh! you know? <laughs> What's this last orange moment shit oh, coming? No! Yeah. Like, I really, at least one of them should have been like, okay, you know, I know that people are going to be seeing this thousands of years from now. And, like, when they died, they should have, like, got a big erection and, like, put their hands on yeah. their heads like, like look that. like a Ben Garrison yeah, monument like Ben Garrison's Trump's monument yeah yeah and she'd be like MAGA even though they don't know what that means yet yeah. and then then we would be going see that's what we'd be saying see? I would be saying see mm-hmm. I would be saying that but uh, fun fact the people of Pompeii did not know that there was other places to live what yeah they thought that Why? Pompeii and then the void uh-huh. so like if you left Pompeii then people would be like see you never so where did they think, like, you know, spices and things from outside of Pompeii came from? The space. Space. Because there's dropping. Pompeii, mm-hmm. nothing else. Right. So it just materializes. Uh-huh. It spawns, if you will. Because it does seem stupid to be like, hey, let's uh, set up shop right next to this mountain that's leaking mm-hmm. volcano ash and uh, blood all over us. Mm-hmm. Let's not live here. It seems stupid. It doesn't look ominous It, it at seems all. stupid to even say, you know, let's not live here. You wouldn't even need to say that. Yeah. Like, if it was me and you and we saw a, we a big... Right, we'd be like, ah, let's go. This is stupid. Here you go. Choice A. You want to live by the volcano. Right. Choice B, do you not want to exist? Right. Because I don't want to live in the void. Maybe they were just all very suicidal. Maybe it was a cult. Mm-hmm. The people of Pompeii. Maybe it was just a big cult. And they set up there, and it was a very slow method of suicide. Because they didn't have Kool-Aid yet. Yeah. Or Flavor-Aid. Or the Amazing Screwdriver. Or the Amazing Screwdriver. Uh, But the statues of some of them look like they're trying to actively go in the other direction. How do you know that? Maybe they're running towards it. Maybe they were just all slow. Maybe. (laughs) That was the thing. (laughs) Like, they had actually been in that that position for two hours before. (laughs) Like, when's the fucking volcano going to (laughs) come? Every single person in Pompeii died in the position that they wanted to be known as. <laughs> this is how I want to be forever immortalized. And every last, every last one of them, the last words were, <laughs> That was it. Yeah. Yeah. In the last words, as you're being consumed by lava, obviously last <laughs> for <laughs> hundreds of seconds. Anyway, so back to uh, Doctor Who. Yeah, Doctor yeah. Who. Uh, what else is I don't I, sell uh, me on the show because I'm not watching it. Well, here's what happens. Right. He isn't. I think you've run out of things that you know about Doctor Who. No, yeah. I can never run out of things that I know about because I know about pretty much everything. Okay. And All if right. I don't, then I do know about. Who it. is the next Doctor Who? Uh, did we do Tom Baker? Tom Baker. You said that twice. Okay. Actually. Uh, How was he the second one, Doctor Who if he was also the first? What happened? Chris Blemish, Chris I believe, was the next one. Blemish. He only lasted like five seasons. Uh-huh. Uh, he was a wiry old gent mm. uh, with a very dry, crackling sense of humor. 
Like when the robots would come, he'd just like step up two flights of stairs and look down at him and say, try it. Just try it. Be that shaking his, his head. That was yeah. his sense of humor. Just that was try his one-liner. It. Yeah, and all That's the British Schwartz people. That's Nag- Nagian if you. Uh, try it, try just it. try it. Yeah, yeah. Get onto these stairs if you want to leave. Yeah, and Schwarzenegger obviously uh, was channeling that in, in saying that Critters one-liner. Critters 2. Critters 2, right. Arnold yes. Schwarzenegger. Uh, he was like, oh, look at these critters. And everybody that was said, such a good no, line. don't look at the critters, Arnold. And don't look like, at no, them. No, look at them. Mm-hmm. Look. And yes. yeah, and we all did look. And I didn't. I, well, I was in the theater when. And he said that and he wasn't in the movie now that should be pointed out yeah he yeah, was yeah, just yeah. in the movie theater screaming at the screen mm-hmm. and when he did that everyone stood up and applauded well no the the thing was actually they made it so you could not look away from the critters because those seats had vice grips on the back of them that would keep your head you know stuck facing yeah. forward and then they had that stanley kubrick-esque kind of things pulling up the your eyelids Vico treatment thing yes. yeah, yeah so you would have to stare at the critters uh-huh. while arnold told you not to and you're just like arnold <laughs> Helpless here. I gotta look at the critters. You know why? Because they didn't want anybody to leave that movie without having fully seen the critters. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, they wouldn't know what their critter sizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good one. Uh-huh. I get it. See, I, I'm channeling Chris Blemish. The tagline was, "Have you seen the critters? No. Well, then watch this movie. Then you'll see the critters." Arnold Schwarzenegger. And you don't have a choice. Yeah, and he actually did not say that, but they attributed <laughs> it to him. <laughs> Somebody else said in a movie theater, and Arnold Schwarzenegger said, I just said that. And the guy writing copy said, okay. Yeah. yeah. I wrote down. You know, Abraham Lincoln had a lot of good quotes. In Critters? In in Critters. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. He He was in in Critters Go to New York or Critters in Outer Space? Because I don't remember. I believe he was in all of them. Really? He was in a dream sequence in Critters in Space. Uh, Yeah, he was in Critters in New York, obviously, as the main character. Yeah, New York. Billy Bob. I thought he played New York. That too. Critters in New York starring Abraham Lincoln as New York. See, this drives me crazy. The original name of New York, obviously. It was Abraham Lincoln's monster. It was was Billy Bob. And then it was Abraham Lincoln's monster. Uh Uh-huh. And then it was New York. (laughs) Anyway, so, so he had Baker. some great lines. He had some great lines. Yeah, he lines, did. He did. Abraham Lincoln mm-hmm. in the Critters movies. We'll call him Honest Abe. You yep. know why? Because honestly, he had great lines in Critters. He had amazing lines. Yeah. yeah. Like, for instance, I can't remember him. You you have the memory for this guy. For of Critters? Thing. Yeah. What, what oh, did Abraham geez. Lincoln okay, say? Well, in critters? the first Critters, as you recall, the Critters were uh, fugitives from another planet, sure. which obviously is an analogy for racism. Uh huh. Well, they, so yeah, they, they were runaway slaves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That. Killed and ate people mm-hmm. and ruled really fast. Like right. Sonic the Hedgehog will wipe out. I wish part. Sonic would eat me. <laughs> <laughs> would cure my crippling autism and fear of crowds. Uh, so the critters, which were slavery, were defeated by an intergalactic bounty hunter. Okay. Also known as Abraham Lincoln. Right. There was a scene with a barn in it. Uh, that, that really covers. You the haven't first gotten one. to an Abraham Lincoln quote, though. Huh? Oh, yeah. um, he said. Hey, look over there. Yeah, that was a good one. To the uh, female lead, yeah, who promptly died mm-hmm. because she looked over there and where she was looking, a critter was flying right She's at her flying face. Flying right at her goddamn face. Abraham Lincoln was kind of an asshole because he would just he like you know he wanted her to feel the fear before she died. You know, it's the mean, worst if, if feeling. If she just died, then she'd be like, oh, it's like she wouldn't even know she yeah. was being attacked. She'd just be killed. Well, you feel like it's a rip off because you're like, okay, I'm dead. What happened? Like when you get right. sniped in a game and you, you just all of a sudden die. And then you're like, what? And then it shows you the kill cam. You're like, oh, right. that motherfucker over there. So Abraham Lincoln is a motherfucking kill cam. True story. Yeah. Uh, when I was a kid, my mm. mom, uh, the Critters came on, the movie came on uh, like, uh, I don't know, the big, not TV. Cable. Yeah, but like not a good TV station. Not Cinemax. Like, no, it wasn't even that. It was like a. Uh, TNT. We don't have an equivalent here in Kansas City. They're just like a shitty channel that used to show nothing but like Three Stooges marathons oh, and yeah. really bad movies. And uh, I saw a preview for Critters and thought, those look cute because I was like four or five. And my mom was like, okay, I will turn off all the lights and let you watch Critters. That was nice of her. I know, and I loved it. It was yeah, great. That was cool. Good times. Yeah. And then after Critters came the Ghoulies. Remember uh, that? I never saw it. Ghoulies, uh, the promotional poster, uh-huh. coming out of the toilet, says, I'll get you in the end. I'm not kidding. That's sexy. Yeah, I'll get yeah. you in the end. Mm. Like, you're going to sit so down. This is a porno, Ghoulies is going to go up your ass. Yeah. That's the whole thing. It was originally going to say, Ghoulies is going to go up your ass. Going to go up your ass. But then they couldn't use ass. Yeah. And so they just changed it to, they'll get you in the end, which confused people. And they're like, the end of what? Like, the end of this light changing to green? 
or um, the end of the CD. I think they mean the end of your life, Rich. So, so they're, they're going to wait until you're on your deathbed. Oh. And you're dying of cancer. And your whole you. family is like, ah, yeah, we're going to miss you. We're going to like, Why did we invite the ghoulies to why? come to your funeral? Why? And then, then right before you die, the ghoulies show up and go, ah. I'll miss you too. Gotcha. And then that's it. Well, no, it. Th that would be I'll entertain you in the end. Oh, right. Y your family sells you to the ghoulies on your deathbed. Well, maybe, no, maybe what it is is the ghoulies show the up. Toilet. Uh, they show up and they go, hey, um, uh, sorry uh, for your loss. Knock, knock. And you're like, who's there? And they're like, uh, orange. Wow, so there's like uh, billions of ghoulies everywhere. Yeah. Just waiting for, what if Wait you die suddenly die. in a car accident? Uh, they they are usually the one that hits you, the oncoming car. <laughs> oh, like you. seven ghoulies Is standing it? on each right. other's shoulders in a trench coat, <laughs> driving a car. The cars collide. They fly through the yeah. windshield into your car uh -huh. and tell you a knockout joke. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I understand this now. Yeah. It all makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, what were we talking about again? Uh, we were talking about Doctor Who. Doctor Who, yeah. Yep. He's immortal, first of all. He's immortal? He's immortal. Like the Im immortals, oh, okay. like in Mortal Kombat. Right, right. Like in Sub-Zero with a heart so cold. Sub-Zero, your life is a mystery with your heart so cold. Sub-Zero. You've never heard that. I was hoping you were making that up. No. That's a no, real a thing. band called The Immortals, which was actually a spinoff of, I think, Praga Khan who's also with Lords of Acid. Okay. Did it, yeah. I believe. Mm -hmm. Using good. My, I mean, it kind of sounded like James Bond, but for Sub-Zero. James Bond actually was not in Mortal Kombat. No, Johnny Cage was obviously James Bond. Yeah. He was the British-American interpretation. Asian version. Yeah, mm -hmm. of James Bond. Yes. Were there any British people in Mortal Kombat? Uh, oh, 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 oh. Uh, that girl who uh, wears the uh, green mask over her face because she's got all the fucked up teeth? Uh, British. Well, obviously British, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Torgo. Yeah, Torgo's British. Torbo, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you can is. see him holding like eight teacups. Yeah, yeah. At once. Because he's got all those hands. Yeah. And, you know, if they had the number one best healthcare system in the world, mm. i.e., Americas. That's where I live. Then he would have been able to get all those fucking arms lopped off. Yeah. But because he's got the goddamn NHS, he goes there, he's like, ah, too many arms. And they're like, yeah. His yeah. finishing move, his yeah. quote was, eight spots of tea, governor. Right. Right. And like, because, 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 you know, you know spot a tea, that's right. like, you know, you got one cup. He's got fucking eight cups <laughs> And here. then he, he gives you all eight cups and then you- No, he drinks them. All the, oh. He drinks them to humiliate you in public. Okay. He's what was his, What was his babality? He hit you with the teacup <laughs> until you became a baby. Because fun fact, uh, if you are hit with the teacup, you actually do age in reverse. Really? If it's full of tea. If and all the tea goes out of the teacup, it's an old saying. Is this if how the tea leaves, the baby appears. Oh, I get it. I see what you're doing. Tea leaves. Oh, so anyway, yeah, Doctor Who is that, that how he time travels? He just drinks a shitload of tea? No, okay, see, he's an alien. Uh-huh. And he's immortal. So what would happen if he drank tea? He'd say, this is good tea, probably, mm. if it was good tea. If it was bad tea, he'd probably make some sort of British humor, like, this is good tea, but he'd be sarcastic about oh, okay. it. Okay, all right. Like, very dry sarcastic. Like, yeah. like, okay, here's, like, American, okay? This is really good tea, okay? And here's the British good. sarcastic version of that, okay? Right. This is very good tea. So see what I did sarcastic. there? They're so fucking... Yeah. So wait, any time a, a British person has complimented me, they're just being sarcastic? If they're saying anything good, it's sarcasm. So if they're saying something bad, it's good? Yeah, like looking good, mate, right. you look like shit. But if they go, right, you look like you just pulled yourself out of, you know, one of those things that we call them. The, the loo? The loo. Uh-huh. Or a, a lorry. Wait, wasn't the loo? Or, isn't that like in France? Yeah. The loo? And I did just pull myself out of the loo because I was born in St. Louis. And we do all look like this because... St. Lou. Oof. What powers did St. Lou have in Catholicism? St. Lou? Yeah. Um, the power to found shitty Saint cities. St. Lou, St. Guido. <laughs> Saint My three Lou. brothers and I founded this city. St. <laughs> Big Vinny. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's something we've never really talked about, saints. Yeah. Yeah, we've, I mean, we've talked about religion, obviously. Because I grew up Catholic. So I, I know too. all about them. Yep. Actually, I don't, because I blocked it all out. You did. Mm -hmm. uh, well, there's many saints that we could talk about. The great thing about Catholicism is forgetting it all. Mm -hmm. There's St. Bert. Right. He was actually the person who invented uh, Gertrude's boots. Gertrude's for boots. For the Apple IIc. You're probably not aware of that, are you? I have no you? idea what you're talking Gertrude's about. Gertrude's boots. Uh-huh. 
It was a game where you learned about and or or gates, and you also learned how to spell. Okay. In the luxury of your own home on your Apple II personal computer system. So by Steve Jobs. It was Saint R.I.P. and peace, Steve Jobs. Bert, yes, sir. But he named made a game called Gert. Gertrude's Boots. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not so, Rocky's Boots. Uh, then Gertrude, obviously Saint Bertha. Yeah. Yeah. She Which was is a, just, I think actually that was just Saint Bert trying to get you know double sainthood by like. Oh, Oh, yeah, he did that thing where, like, one half of his face was shaved and the right. other half wasn't. Yes. And then makeup and on one half. And yeah. yeah. And then... And Victor, then the, Victoria who, type of thing. And then God, you know, who's in charge of playing Stacey, he's like, yeah, yeah, you. I want you. And then he turned around. Mm-hmm. And then he goes, what about me? And he goes, yeah, yeah, you too. You're a saint too. <laughs> and he just, like, wrote down saint, saint. Sure, fine, off on whatever. His list. You know what? I'm God. I got, I'm fucking busy up here. He's got a lot of stuff to not do. That's actually one of the first lines of the Bible. It's usually omitted. It makes me angry. Why? Uh, why does it make me angry? Or why is it omitted? Why does the Bible make you angry? It's a uh, soothing piece of work. Be, well, because I, when I read my version of the Bible, it starts with, hey, I'm God. I'm really fucking busy. I don't have time to tell you all this shit. And that's pretty much it. Like, that's the way it begins and the way it ends. And I'm done. But then I went to Catholic school and they're like, here's the Bible. It's like 15,000 fucking pages. Uh, we're not even including like the Muslim Bible or getting Bible into that 2.0. And I remember when I was a kid, they found those Dead Sea Scrolls. And I was like, there's more? Why? Well, and then think about if you're Mormon. I mean, Joseph Smith, he put on the magic glasses, started to find pieces of the Bible everywhere, all over the <laughs> fucking fields and shit. I really always thought the Bible just, you know, the writer of the Bible, he needed a good editor. Obviously, yeah. he didn't. It was obviously self-published. And anytime you read something that's self-published, you're like, it's dude. It's like Stephen King. Somebody needs to tell you to pare this shit down. Yeah, like Stephen King just like writes 5,000 words about the description of a single brick in a building. And then, yeah. oh, by the way, uh, the monster killed everybody. <laughs> Next chapter. Plot twist. The monster yeah. was actually the guy you thought was good. Okay, so if Joseph Smith put on the glasses, yeah. he found Bible 2.0 or whatever the fuck they call it. Right. Are we to believe that there could be more Bible passages everywhere, all oh, over the place? That's a great point. Oh, God. It's like, what if I went back, you know, in my backyard, mm-hmm. and I'm cleaning up dog poop, and I find another page of the Bible, and it said stuff like, uh, Jesus was on a plow farm doing the oxen. Farm? Doing wait, wait, the hold on. Oxen. Let's just break that out for a second. Plow farm. A plow farm? Yeah. Like, where they farm plows? No, where you they use, use a plow. plows to farm. Oh, okay, because that wasn't very clear from what you were saying. Plow. How is that not clear? I plow made it farm. sound like Jesus is working on a fucking farm where he goes, God damn it, I thought we had dirt, but no, it's just a bunch of metal shit that looks like plows. Why would he damn his own father? You don't say dad damn no, it. He's, he's not damning his father. God when damn it? says God damn it, they're saying, I hope God damns that thing. And Jesus... You know, Jesus saying, God damn it, is kind of like if, you know, like, my dad owns a dealership. My dad's a lawyer. Uh-huh. You know, it's like the same my thing. My dad invented Nintendo, and I get right. to play all the Mario games before anybody gets to see them. Yeah. yeah Jesus, that, that kid that everybody fucking knew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had one kid who told me that there's a shark in pole position, too. It made me upset because he said, if you drive off the edge of the mountain course on pole position two, a shark would come out and eat your car. What? And I would do it like 80 times. And it never happened. The shark never came out. Yeah, well, you need to do it 81 times. That's you don't really bother me, though. Do you ever see the movie Daryl? No. Okay, Daryl was an acronym for something. He was a robot, basically. Wait, was it the little boy who was a robot? Yes. Yeah, I, I do remember this movie. Do yeah. you remember the scene where he played pole position? No. And it went super fucking fast. Like... Okay, there, there's this boy and this girl. They're playing pole position. <laughs> we're stupid. We're, we're, we're dumb little kids. Uh, my car is crashing. Uh, I got zero points. Then he picks up the controller and somehow it starts going super fast. He's getting all the points. Right. He's doing all the right moves. Yeah. How can a robot make a game go faster just by holding the joystick? That pissed me off. There's no realism in that movie whatsoever about the human robot boy. Maybe he wasn't making the game go fast. Maybe it was making time itself go fast. No, because their no. reactions were in real time. That game was oh, playing at least wow. four times speed. Yeah. I don't remember. I just remember him playing baseball or something. Oh, yeah. And he uh, uh, he hit the coach with the can. Didn't he murder him? Yeah. With yeah. The, no, the, he made the, the vending machine shoot the can out That's of Coke. What, right. Into, into the and then he got ass. on the bulldozer right. and he ran over the third baseman. <laughs> <laughs> Maximum Overdrive. <laughs> Stephen King, again. <laughs> we made them. <laughs> we made you. We made you. <laughs> then Yardley Smith. Wasn't she in that? Yeah, she was. Yeah, the voice was of Lisa Simpson. Horrible. She wasn't great. And so there's a reason why you only he- know her as the voice of Lisa Simpson. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly yeah. because The after face of terror. Maximum voice of Lisa. Overdrive was going to be her big breakthrough. Yes. And uh, the only thing she broke through was the mounds and mounds of cocaine. That's... <laughs> All of them used. <laughs> to get to Stephen King's office to discuss notes with him. Yes. 
The, the actual pages, the script of Maximum Overdrive were uh, made with cocaine. Really? Yeah. So what you know, you read, you were doing the reading <clears throat> while snorting at the same time. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Doing lines, reading lines. Got yeah. it. Good. Yeah. That's that's some stuff mm -hmm. that is excellent. Yeah. So anyway, we were talking about uh, how the Bible could be longer and should be longer. We were. We yeah. You found dog poop in your yard. Oh that, yeah, the that Bible. Says Jesus was making a plow farm. A farm. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, and I got distracted by mm -hmm. your terminology. So uh, well, that actually ties into it because he was on the plow farm. Mm -hmm. Somebody walked by and they asked Jesus, Jesus, what is a plow farm if thou hast not plow nor farm? And Jesus said, to thy eye, if thee are thyself, an honest man, comma, maketh thy going quicker. And the man doth respondeth, Jesus, forlorn have I several eons thyself. End quote. It's fun to watch you, the gestures you're making while you're doing that. I'm not that. making gestures. It reminds me very much of very racist interpretations of Native American speak from like 1950s cowboys and Indians. I am racist. <laughs> you're like, they go to big heap mountain. <laughs> Whoop them. With, Speaking where of much deer are in plenitude. I watched the first episode of Renegade. What's Do you remember that with Lorenzo with Lamas? Lamas. Yeah, 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 from I the never 90s. Watched it. I know exactly. I used to what watch it all the time in college, yeah. drunk, with wow. my friend uh, Dan. I can't remember Watson, I believe. Dan Watson. Vanderbilt. Okay, and the first episode. Okay, first of all, Lorenzo Lamas' girlfriend. Uh, the first five minutes is dedicated to Lorenzo Lamas fucking his girlfriend on the beach. You know, and yeah. uh, whenever he has a line, how hardcore does it get? Uh, not very. Oh. No, I mean it, you can see the sand. Because I want to see that Lamas. No, you can see the sand. I want to see his ass. I know that, but it just shows the sand is what I'm saying. So instead and of his surfs. ass, so is his ass covered in sand? I wasn't looking at his ass. I was looking at the beautiful woman mounds on their chest, uh, whatever they're right, called. Right. The woman, sand mounds. The woman. Uh, That's what I call them. Protrusion. Chestal protrusion. Chest, yeah. So anyways, Lorenzo Lamas' girlfriend, she gets gunned down by a guy. Okay. And they, they describe it as a 38. Uh -huh. Okay. Do you know anything about guns? I, I know that. Um, they exist. That I know that they're protected by the uh, Declaration of Independence. Mm -hmm. So okay. I know that. So uh, a thirty-eight, you know what that means, right? It yeah. uses he 38. means he has 38 guns, like 38 barrels. That's 30. actually incorrect. Oh. It means that's 38 caliber, which oh. is the type of ammunition that it uses. Okay. Okay, and that's a revolver. You know what a revolver is? It like it's a gun that when you shoot it, it just keeps going in yeah, a you, big yeah, circle in it your It hand. never ends. It never ends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, anyways, they shoot his girlfriend, she dies. For some reason, the revolver ejects shell casings <laughs> because there are 7.62 millimeter shell casings on the ground because uh -huh. they are shaped differently. But that's than not what a revolver does. It, no, and it there's two of them. Revolvers are very greedy. Yeah, so yeah. it's a it's a 38 caliber 7.62 millimeter shell ejecting revolver that mm -hmm. kills his girlfriend. But the point that I was getting to originally was that uh, his boss, Bobby, is a Native American. And the evil racist police cop goes up to him. You know, he's like, I need you to find Lorenzo Lamas, Chief Wampum. <laughs> Why don't you go get drunk, you Native American faggot? <laughs> and then Bobby's just like, you know what? I'll take your insults because I'm used to it. And I like people thinking that I'm a half-wit drunk because that gives me the upper edge. But like one tear rolled down the side of his face. No tears because no, he wow. had the upper hand. Oh, he showed good. that white piece of shit who's boss. That's that's what we need to do to, He's boss. to every white person. Show well, them who's boss. But who is boss? Uh, because not, every white person has a different boss. Uh, yeah. Mine's a Jewish carpenter. You but know that. Is there somebody who doesn't have a boss? Tony Danza. <laughs> well, he, he has a boss, though, just nobody knows who it is. Judith Light. He, he would, that's how that the first episode of Who's the Boss started. Alyssa Milano. He was just going from door to door going, hey, uh, are you my boss? Oh, and then. Until finally Judith Light was like, I don't know. I guess we need somebody to clean up around here. She though. was actually on the phone and didn't hear. He wasn't, she wasn't talking to him. She yeah, was just saying yes on the she phone. She was ordering a maid service. Yeah. And then Tony like, oh, says, oh, I used to play for the Cardinals or something. Uh -huh. And uh, then she, yeah. No, he did. He used to play for the St. Louis Cardinals. Really? Uh, was he good? See, the thing about growing up in St. Louis is if there's any fucking minutia in pop culture tied to St. Louis, you know it. Because mm. we're just so desperate for relevancy. You're the best fans in baseball. Best fans in baseball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're the also, worst. Not the most racist. 
Uh, White Sox. Anyway, so we uh, we were talking about Tony Danza and who's the boss. And so she's like, yeah, you used to play for the Cardinals. I guess you could probably clean up the house a little bit. Well, the thing is, once you, even if you accidentally say that you're the boss of somebody, then legally you have to be. Uh, so, you know, you approach somebody and you say, you know, they're on the phone and they're they're calling 1-800-SAY-THE-WORD-YES. Uh, I mean, that's too many numbers. But anyways, the whole thing is you call the number and you just say yes repeatedly. You win big cash prizes. Mm -hmm. uh, boat trips, starring Cuba Gooding Jr. Uh -huh. and Horatio Sands. Right. Uh, you also win expensive luxury cars, uh, fast Italian imports too. But you just have to say the word yes repeatedly. Over the more yeses again. you say, you know, the bigger chance you have so of winning. So it's like the movie Yes Man with Jim Carrey. It's like the movie Say Yes. Mm. They haven't made it yet. Yeah. But I'm it sure there's a movie this. called Say Yes. <laughs> say yes if you want to win prizes. Right, if you want to win prizes. It's, it's a game and that's show. It, that, that's in parentheses. Say yes, parentheses, if you want to win prizes. That would be a great game show. It's say yes if you want to win prizes. And Where they have rules? like 15 people up there. And they're like, do you want to win prizes? And the first guy's like, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, he uh, would lose. Yeah, he would lose. And then the next person would be like, yep. And they're like, god damn it, no. And then, so then they go to the next person. Do you want to win prizes? Say yes if you want to win oh, prizes. Oh, they have and to like, hold out yeah. to whoever says yes. And so finally most. somebody says yes. And oh, the next person would be like, yavol, because they're fucking German. No, it's yeah. say yes, you stupid fucking Deutscher. Wouldn't they just like filter those people out when they're screening the crowd? Oh, you would think so. I, I would. But they don't. I, oh. they don't do that in game shows. They, okay. don't, they don't filter people out. They just grab random idiots off the street and just let them do anything. Yeah, and then they start, like, in the later rounds, they start making more complex, like, say yes if you want to win prizes, comma, and lick my butthole. Right. And right. the person will be like, oh, uh, oh, geez, prizes, butthole, mm. oh, I've got to weigh the two. And then they're the boss. But then they, they lick a butthole and they win prizes. I mean, no, they that, actually don't. Is that really show any that worse TV. than day-to-day -day life here in the corporate grind of America? Fun fact, you can't show licking buttholes on regular uh, no, network television. No, you wouldn't do that. You would just put, like, a, you know, like a curtain that the person has to go under to lick yeah, the butthole. Yeah, you have to you lick a curtain. See like the back of their head while they're licking the butthole and obviously the guy or girl I guess. oh like a silhouette yeah okay so they'd be backlit you uh -huh. just see a silhouette of a head just going into a butt. Then how are you going to show the tongue? Because that's going to be really hard. You have to close up on it. And you have to have somebody whose tongue actually comes out of their mouth. Yeah and is very visible right. being Long. backlit behind a curtain. Yeah. That's too complicated. Maybe it should just be Gene Simmons. Just Gene. Sim you want Gene Simmons to lick this guy's asshole? So a reality show called Gene Simmons licks a butthole. Gene Simmons behind celebrity the curtain. butthole licking. No, it'd just be a one-off. Uh huh. That's it. No. It just butthole licked. Those were my favorite version of game shows when they were like, hey, you know what? People are sick and tired of watching people that they can relate to win oh. shit. Let's have only celebrities who have already succeeded and are already rich on the shows to make sure that, you know, their lives are even better than they already are. And they'll say things which normal people would not laugh at, but they will laugh at because they're celebrities. Because they're celebrities. And we know they're jokes. Right. Yeah, it's Celebrity Jeopardy. And, uh, you know, you have uh, Idris Elba on Celebrity Jeopardy, and he's like, um, I'm a British guy, and nobody thinks that because I'm black. And that's it. He wins. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. What was that? What was the question to that? <laughs> he, that's Alex Trebek just asked him who he is. Oh, and he's oh, I'm a black guy, but nobody. So really it's knows like he picked who that, are you? Because I'm black. For no, he didn't even ask him a question. Oh, he just said that. And how do you Alex fit Trebek advertising like, spots into done. that? Why would you? To make money. Oh, dude, you just do that, then roll credits for 25 minutes. People watch that shit just because they're celebrities on stage. So it's just a regular credit you roll, the but it's slowed from down. Dark Tower on there. Everybody's going to watch that, just like they all watch that movie. It, people watch the Dark no, Tower? Nobody watched that movie. I wanted to watch it. Yeah, it looks bad. I hoped it was good. No, it's really bad. You saw it? No. But people who I trust saw yes. it. Yes. I, 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 too, have read reviews. Mm-hmm. They were negative, yeah, but which I is why I'm saying I wish it was good. I've also seen things like uh, trailers for the movie that trailers. look really bad. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he lives by bullets or something. He, he, he is the master of the bullets. <laughs> he throws the bullets up into the air and catches them in his revolver. Bullet time. Which is what it's called. Right, it's just taking the metrics to another level. And then Matthew McConaughey is there. He's like legalizing well, weed or whatever. My favorite line from it is, uh, is he like the devil? No, he's worse. What's worse? How is worse than the devil? The devil's kind of cool, though. The devil, well, maybe that's what it is. Maybe he's just like an uncool version of the devil. But then he's played by Matthew McConaughey, who by the fact that he's Matthew McConaughey is supposed to be a cool person in everything that he's in. They should have just said, is he the devil? No, he's worse. Comma. Math. He's Matthew McConaughey. <laughs>
<laughs> he's Matthew McConaughey. Terrible at math, actually. Yes. But yeah, yeah, he's. That would be great. You could do. Actually, no, it's, worse. it's pronounced Matt Hugh. Matt Hugh. So you can't really do the math joke oh, with fuck that. You. God Matt damn it. Hugh. Nobody says Matt Hugh McConaughey. Matt Hugh Economy is yeah, his name. Uh-huh. Matt Hugh Economy. That's because he's so good looking. People were like, "Oh, Matt Hugh." No, that's because there's an entire economy built around his face. His Matt face. Matt Hugh Economy and the various colors that his face changes to. Like in very, he's white, got a mood face. Tan. Red. No, like yeah, like red with anger. Red with anger. Blue with anger as well. Blue with yellow like with anger. Also, uh, g- g- clear with mm-hmm. less anger. Purple with ecstasy. Because uh, uh, that's an allergic reaction he has. Tan with drug. weed. Yes. Yeah. I think that's pretty much it. Are there any other colors? Uh, brown. No, that's no, that's like Pluto. They discredited that. That's oh, not a sorry. color anymore. Okay. Uh, uh, no, that's all. That's every color. Fuchsia? No, I, I named every color. Okay, you got the whole color wheel out. I mean, it was. It it's was not impressive. a fucking wheel. So anyway, uh, yeah, but it's he's the devil. No, he's worse. But they, you're right. Maybe they cut the trailer off. It, it would be like, no, he's worse at spelling. He's worse or at he's, acting. He's worse at giving directions. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. That's that's. <laughs> But if you ask him in the movie, hey, how do you get to the Dark Tower? And he's like, oh, you go uh, left at Pittsburgh. But isn't he at the Dark Tower? All I remember I don't know. about the Dark Tower series of books is that there was talking lobsters or something. I Dot a chick, dot a chum, dot a chew, dot a dot a dot a chew, dot a chick. I thought I was reading the Dark Tower. It turned out I was reading Misery. So, Oh, that's the one where Very Kathy confused. Bates hits a man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what she does. She just hits a man and goes, female empowerment, bitches. Oh, I love yeah, it. She's a total feminazi in that I movie. love movies with the message. The message of... It's okay to hit men. Yeah. Yeah. If, if they're writers. Mm-hmm. Because I totally supported that van that ran over Stephen King. I'm like, <laughs> do it again. He's still alive. <laughs> you fucked up the first time, asshole. <laughs> I never thought about that, that the guy who wrote Maximum Overdrive was almost killed by a van. Yeah. There was no driver. <laughs> you think he was laying there on the ground twitching, going, we made you. Yes. We made you. He was laughing and blood just <laughs> with every single how laugh. How many movies, how many Stephen King books and movies are there where fucking car, the little kid in uh, Pet Cemetery gets run over by a semi. Oh, oh, Christine oh. obviously kills a bunch of motherfuckers. Yeah, there was the the incest movie where they were invisible vampire werewolves right? and the guy had the invisible car yep. and they killed the cop with a corn cob. Which is a cool scene. I love that movie. Yeah. The incest, not so great. That's eh, okay. Every No. It's all right. I like the fact that the cats fucking hated them. Their house was just surrounded by cats who are pissed off. <laughs> and there's that scene where, like, the mom's, like, getting done. Like, like, okay, I've kissed you enough, son. Done with the sexy time. Uh-huh. And then she opens the door and just cats. Come, <laughs> yeah, don't do that again. And the cats just come flying <laughs> they in. Go, and they're like, oh, no, it's cats. Which would also be a good game show. <laughs> oh, no, it's cats. Oh, no, it's cats. Okay. No, 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 so no, 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 no. There's just hold a bunch on, of, hold on. Okay, how does, how does Oh No, It's Cats It's work? a restaurant. I okay. changed it, okay? Oh, no. There's this, it's called Oh No, It's Cats. It's the five-star fine dining experience, okay? But on the wall, there's a giant LED counter counting down from 30 minutes. Uh-huh. And as soon as it's getting there, and as soon as it hits zero, all the lights turn off. Right. Red lights, you know, turn on, and you hear the announcer say, Oh No, It's Cats. Do, 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 Hundreds do, do, of cats do, 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 are let into the room do, 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 through the air vents. Do, 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 cats do, do, everywhere. Do, 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 and no, here's the thing. Illegal immigrants are then allowed to catch the cats. And you get to bet on which illegal immigrant will catch the catch most cats. The most cats. Cat yeah. Cat-age. Oh, no, it's cats. Yeah. It's entertainment. It's uh, it's a dining experience. What, what I like is. about it is it's full-fledged. It, Always seemed like it was going to go in some kind of racist direction, and no. it never did. I don't. So I thought that. you'd be like, and it's, it turns out it's a Chinese restaurant, but you didn't. No, it didn't. or because the illegal Chinese immigrants and dogs, they're all Asians. No, nope. I don't think racism's funny. I don't either. It's not my cup of tea. I think governor. racists are funny. They are. They're hilarious. Yeah, because they say dumb things. And I that's like funny. I like how they're the master race. What did they master? I don't. I think. I, I think they've mastered the ability to appear to be men without chins. Like, that's most true. people you see without a chin, you're like, that's a lady. But no, with them, you're like, that's obviously a dude. Because they grow the beard right there. This this should be its own episode. We uh-huh. need to cut this off right here. Okay, right we're, here. We're done with it. We're going to come back and talk about the master race. Race is next. Right. <laughs>